Well, hello, I'm Mara Hennigan, your Suffolk County Superior Court Clerk Magistrate for Criminal Business, representing the city of Boston, the communities of Chelsea, Revere, and Winthrop. And it's great to be with you. Guess what? It's not snowing. Can you believe it? But it is freezing. But we know spring is around the corner because the groundhog did not see his shadow, so be prepared. It's, it's coming soon, we hope. Well, before we get underway, I do want to thank our sponsor, and our sponsor this month is Gregory Chaffee, who is an MBA certified public accountant, 452 Bennington Street in Boston, 02128. His phone number is 617-567-1118. He provides income tax service, serving East Boston for over 20 years, monthly bookkeeping service, payroll service, gets you fast refunds, refunds free electronic tax filing uh, with a paid federal return, and hablamos espanol, so he speaks Spanish for our Latino constituents. So we thank you so much for sponsoring us this month, and we have a wonderful organization that is joining us today, Respond Inc. And with Respond Inc., we have both Jessica Braden, who is the executive director, and Victoria Helberg, who is the program coordinator. And we want to welcome both of you here. We really appreciate you coming. And I thought one of the best ways to start out, we were talking a little bit before the show, is a lot of people really may not understand exactly what domestic violence is. And maybe we could talk a little bit about that because. Sadly, I know in the newspaper, and we don't know that this was a domestic violence incident, but there was a woman and her two-year-old baby found in a dumpster in Brockton. You know, sometimes you hear these horrific, horrific stories, and sometimes it turns out that it's either a boyfriend or a spouse, partner, and it's just devastating. So I think that's always very clear when you see something like that after that person is convicted. But Sometimes domestic violence isn't always so easy to ID, or a lot of people may not exactly understand if they're a victim or if someone they know is. Correct. Um, one of the things um, people recognize as domestic violence is physical abuse, but oftentimes um, they don't understand that there's a lot more to it. One of the things that always gets my spidey sense is when I hear people are being isolated. That's the first thing as a friend that we can look at our other friends, neighbors, colleagues, if uh, they're absent from all the places they used to be. One partner will control the other partner and get them to um, stop associating with their family, their friends, their social networks. So isolation is one thing to look out for. Financial abuse, control of somebody's paycheck, making um, sure that your paycheck is directed deposited into your partner's account, not your account. You don't have the passwords or the PIN number. Um, financial abuse is significant because that really, when you combine it with the isolation, limits resources when to be able to... someone controls your money, they control you. Absolutely. And, and now you don't have any friends or family to partner with or flee to or go to, so they've eliminated um, a place to escape to and means in which to escape. Um, we also see significant uh, mental abuse, threats, threats to harm um, family members, threats to harm pets. Um, so all of that factors into what domestic violence is as well. Wow. You know, that's, it's really overwhelming and very scary when you think about it because you really become a prisoner, uh, almost a hostage in your own relationship and in your own environment. And it must be very, very difficult, and it's usually women, but can be men as well. And, and just to think of somebody going through that, really, it's, it's heartbreaking. And I know that's what Respond and both of you do in your capacity with Respond. So talk a little bit about Respond's mission, where you're located, and how individuals might be able to access your services. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, I like that you pointed out that domestic violence can happen to anybody, and Respond does serve both women and men who are in same or opposite sex relationships. Um, anybody who needs our services is encouraged to please call our hotline and talk about how we can best help. So that's one of the services that we have is a hotline, and Victoria will talk a little bit more in depth about that. But we also have community-based programs. Um, we provide individual counseling, 
We have group counseling, both for males and females. Um, we have uh, legal support, so we'll have advocates go into the court and help people file for restraining orders. And we have great community partners that help with housing research, um, finding pro bono attorneys. So um, we can really meet folks where, are, where they are and help them with their particular circumstance. But really the point of entry into the majority of our programming is through our emergency hotline, which is answered 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And Victoria can talk a little bit about the life-saving services and what would happen if you were to call a hotline. Great, Victoria. So the hotline is, like Jessica said, answered 24 hours a day, and it's, we get a whole bunch of different calls. So we might get calls from uh, survivors themselves who are looking for services, or we get calls from concerned relatives or friends. Um, and a lot of this, what we're doing on the hotline is providing emotional support, but we are also educating people on domestic violence because, as Jessica pointed out, people don't realize that they're in an abusive relationship sometimes, or people will... Um, will um, not get the seriousness of their situation. So it's pointing that out to them, really talking to them, giving, getting a history of the relationship, uh, things that have happened, um, and saying to them, this is, you know, this is concerning. This is, you know, as a trained domestic violence provider, this is serious, you need, you know, this is what help is available to you. Um, and the same thing with people who are calling for relatives or friends, you know. Yep, sounds like domestic violence, sounds serious, here are some resources to give your friends. Can you talk a little bit about what some of those high-risk indicators are? Yeah. Um, a lot of times, you know, I think that sometimes I talked to a woman yesterday who said, well, it's not, a, it's not physical abuse, but in fact, the financial abuse was so significant that she wasn't able to purchase medications or food, and that turns into physical abuse once you start um, limiting people's access to, you know, their emerg to their immediate needs or their basic needs. And, you know, um, I would also think, too, that Part of this escalates over time. It mm -hmm. may start out with limited control, whether it's financial, whether it's emotional, mm -hmm. how, however it, it, whatever form it takes, and you both would certainly know this, but sometimes, you know, it may just may be very subtle, mm -hmm. but then over time it escalates, and I suppose the worst thing that can happen is when somebody is seriously hurt or, God forbid, mm -hmm. someone is killed because of it so you obviously you want to intervene before that becomes an issue yeah. so the this counseling in these programs are really so so important because what you want to do is get these people out of that situation give them the courage mm -hmm. to be able to take the necessary steps and it does take courage to take these steps because you know you may be leaving your home mm -hmm. be, be le you know leaving your job in some instances because you could be stopped Exactly. Uh, you, you may have children, you, you don't know what to do, you don't know how to care mm -hmm. for them, so it, it's very, very complicated. The people in our emergency shelter um, have abandoned the majority of their social supports. Their children have been forced to leave their school, they can't see their primary care physician who may maybe been the family's physician for several generations. Um, attorneys, any place that they can be tracked, their p situation is so dire, they are left with no other recourse but to abandon their life as a way it is and seek refuge in our emergency shelter. And, um, and just think how, how bad someone's life has to be to be willing to take that step, to, mm -hmm. to walk away from everything that you know, and as intolerable as it is, at least you know that. Whereas walking away, you may wonder, what am I going to do for money? What am I going to do about a job? Where are my kids going to go to school? Where do I go? You know, what if my partner, husband, spouse follows me and starts stalking me? All these questions are, and, and not to mention, I'm sure, the, the stigma that many people feel is associated with this, which edu why education is so important, because we have to speak to these victims and let them know nothing is worth risking your life and the life of your, of your children, your family, to stay in an unhealthy relationship. A couple of points I want to make is, first of all, it's never their fault. You know, a lot of the folks who come to us come with a lot of blame. And you talked a little bit about it didn't start out that way. It doesn't start out that way because many of us, if we started in a relationship like that, would be very aware and get out quickly. It's 
in, it's slowly over time, the more time that they're with someone, the more controlling the partner comes, and it's, it's a process that strips away all resources um, and an ability to advocate for oneself and, and stay safe. And oftentimes, ch children are threatened, so parents will find themselves in a position where they need to protect their children. Another thing that's really um, important about Respond is since it was founded in the early 70s, the founders made a very conscious decision to serve teenage boys in the shelter, even before we made the decision to serve men in our shelter. And um, today, many shelters still will not serve teenage boys, making a parent choose between their safety or being with their children. And that's a decision that no parent should ever have to make. Um, but when Victoria gets calls on the hotline, and you talk about leaving behind all these resources, these are the things that she starts to do right there on the phone call is to safety plan with people about how they can either access those services safely or start to find new services or resources and keep themselves and their family safe. Yeah, I think we do, there is a lot of that done on the hotline where people are trying to decide, am I gonna stay or am I gonna go into shelter? What's that gonna be like? And you know, talking people through the process. Um, Cause it is very scary and like you said, you're giving up and the abuser sort of wins ultimately because he gets to stay in the community or she gets to stay in the community and you have to give up everything, your job, you know, every support you've had and come into shelter and it's so super scary. But I think um, there's a lot of conversation about um, let's, let's, you know, what are the, what are the, what are, what's at stake right now, you know? Is it, are you, what's your situation like? Because there are some people that, you know, they need to get out like now, you know, and get to safety. Um, You've had some pretty high intensity phone calls where people would call and have only moments to speak with you. Yes, we've done a couple, we've planned a couple of escapes on our hotline that have just been so incredible to be a part of. Um, we had a family who, who had reached out to a couple of organizations and couldn't get any help and finally got us on the line and said, you know, I have five minutes until my husband gets home and I need to get out of this house now. It's it's too dangerous. I can't stay here. And so we actually coordinated like this large effort between us and the Boston Police Department to get her out of her house and get her into safety. And it was just, you know, it's like something that's changed my life forever, but it's unfortunate but we're doing that every day. Right. And and that's, you know, and I have to think with difficult economic times and in in I'm, I'm sure in most instances the abuser or the domestic violence person is perpetrating this crime uh, against it, whether it's a man or a woman, a mm -hmm. family, you know, it, it probably is exacerbated be, because people go through difficult times, they have stress, how they respond to that stress. So I, I would guess, and, and you would certainly know this, would have to think during these difficult times such as we're having now, I would think the cases and the number of calls and victims increases, you know, with a, with a difficult economic climate. So I guess what I'm wondering is viewers out there who may think, I'm in this kind of a situation. Mm -hmm. I want to know how to get out. Or probably more likely than not, I know somebody, mm -hmm. a neighbor, sister, brother, aunt, mother, a friend, who, whoever it is, they want to be able to help them. They probably don't know what to do. What, what do you suggest? I suggest finding resources for them, giving them a hotline number like ours, making sure that they're you know, they know that there's help out there and that they're not alone and that it's not their fault um, and and that they, you know, they can get safe. It might be a lot of work and it's going to be, you know, a hard thing to do, but hopefully they'll have, the, knowing that they have the support of a family or a friend, that's, I think, huge because most people think that there's not going to be anybody who will believe them or there's not going to be anybody who's going to support them. And so knowing that you have a caring neighbor, I think, is sometimes just what somebody needs to say, all right, I can do this, I'm not alone. Right. Something yeah. as simple as, I'm concerned for your safety. I'm here for you. Right. You know, and, and it makes mm -hmm. such a difference. So the work that Respond does, and both that you and so many others do, it's very, very important. And I know it doesn't happen by itself, and it takes money to do these things. And I know tonight you actually have a big fundraiser that's going on. So although we're not allowed to say how much tickets are, but we certainly can give other vital information. And for those who are watching this live, 
this is a great time to give you a commercial. And for those who may see it as a rerun, they can always contribute afterwards. They so can. why don't you give us all the details about this event? Um, the event is tonight at Club Passim in Cambridge. And can I say the website of where they of can course, find it? Of course, of course. So you can go to clubpassim.org and buy tickets there. They're not expensive. I know I can't say how much, but not expensive at all. And we have Annie of um, Annie and the Beekeepers, and we have Birdsong at Morning. And both um, Annie and Birdsong at Morning are longtime supporters of Respond, having donated their time and talent to create a CD several years ago, which was a huge fundraiser for our agency. And they're both very talented um, musicians. So we're really looking forward to the event tonight. And not only will it be a fun night, but it gives us another opportunity to talk about the work that we do and spread awareness, especially this month, because this is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. And we're seeing um, statistically one in three women are affected by domestic violence. We're seeing one in four teenage girls are affected wow, by teen dating violence. Those are staggering statistics. Mm -hmm. That's really amazing. And what time is that event this evening? It starts at 7 o'clock. Okay, and goes till whenever people when leave, it, yeah, huh? Until it's done. <laughs> that, that, that is really wonderful. And the funding for people who may see this after the fact, they can just go on your website? Absolutely. We're always looking for um, people to donate their time, treasure, or talent. Um, and all the ways to donate or participate or volunteer are on our website. Yeah, and, and that is so important because I'm sure a lot of our viewers, and, and you know, when you talk about those statistics, one in three and then one in four for a teenager, you know, if you're a, a parent of, of a teenager, that, that's a scary thing because either your child is affected or probably a friend of your child mm -hmm. is going through this. And it, it is the. It's devastating, and so many times people, they're afraid to say something. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. So the better that we can educate our viewers as to what RESPOND does and so many domestic violence programs around the Commonwealth and around the nation are so, so important. I know RESPOND, first in New England and second in the country. Correct. Yeah. We're very proud of that. And um, we are both also parents of teenagers. Yes. And when I look at my daughter's curriculum, I recognize there's a lot of education she's getting about not drinking and driving, which is wonderful, and um, other ways to keep herself safe, which is, which is great. But parents, please talk about teen dating violence. I think it's something that's miss missing from the curriculum and something that we push as parents for our schools to put in the curriculum. And so parents can call our hotline about tips how to talk to their kids, or kids can call our hotline as well. Right, and that's important. And sometimes, you know, when particularly teenage girls, you know, sometimes they may have this misperception that because your boyfriend is controlling everything in your life, that that means he really loves likes you, you. Yes. and mm -hmm. likes you. And, you know, it, it's really just the opposite. It, as all of us grow up throughout our life, you know, it, you want to have a great relationship, whether it's a boyfriend or a partner or a spouse or, or whoever it is. But the most important thing is to develop as an independent person because you're going to be much more attractive to another person if you are self-confident, if you're self-assured, if, mm -hmm. if you know some of these warning signs and if you don't allow yourself to become a victim. And if someone wants to manipulate you and control you, you don't want that kind of a person in your life. So to be educated and to know what these warning signs are, which clearly RESPOND does, and both of you have dedicated your lives with RESPOND to be able to help people who could potentially become victims. It, it just makes such a difference. So, so really, the work that you are doing, it, it's so important. It, it's just very, very important and can be a matter of life and death. I can. Thank you. Yeah. Now, what I want you to do is I want to give your hotline number so that our viewers are going to know it. I want you to give your website again. And then just any other, we only have a couple minutes left, but any other closing comments you feel are important that maybe we haven't touched on yet? Sure. Our, our crisis um, hotline is a uh, 24-hour line, and it's 617-623-5900. i hold this paper here so you can right. see it's it. It's right up on our screen. Oh, good. Oh, awesome. Um, I would say 
something that's really important to me as a parent of a teenager and sort of somebody that does this work every day is talk to people. You know, don't be, you know, I hear people say, oh, I'm so tired of her. She's never going to leave him. But she, she needs you as a friend right now. Don't, you know, don't back away from people that are in abusive relationships. Stay around. Support them. Even if the abuser doesn't allow contact, just let them know that you're always going to be there whenever they're ready or need help. Um, and talk to your kids. Educate them because it's so super important to talk to them about what a healthy relationship looks like. Okay. And Jessica? On top of that, I would say um, there's increased risk for people who may not speak English and don't have a lot of resources outside their immediate community. Men, if you think it's difficult for women to come forward, it's very difficult for men to come forward. Many people don't recognize that men can be victims of domestic violence, regardless of whether they're in same or opposite sex relationships. Um, and continue, have a difficult conversation with somebody. Say, I'm, I'm worried about you. I, I think you might be unsafe. And be willing to have that conversation. And if you don't know how, call our hotline. We'd be happy to walk you through different ways that you can approach different situations. Right. Well, Jessica and Victoria, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you to Respond. It's a wonderful organization that has been such a trailblazer for such a critical and important issue that sadly we see uh, too much of in the criminal justice system. Victims of domestic violence, people accused of domestic violence, and we certainly don't want to have any sort of a cycle where sometimes people who are abused or see abuse mm -hmm. can become abusers in their, in their later years. So we don't want to see that happen to anybody. And we want to make sure that we don't see some of the horrific things that, that you see on the news and recently we've just seen in the news um, just the other day. So we don't want these things to happen. So thank you so much for what you do. We're very, very grateful. And we really appreciate you joining us today. Thank, thank you. you. We also want to thank our sponsor, and our sponsor this month, MBA Certified Public Accountant Gregory Chaffee, 452 Bennington Street in Boston, 02128. His phone number, 617-567-1118. Again, he does income tax services, monthly bookkeeping, gives you very fast refunds, a free electronic tax filing, and paid federal tax return. And hablamos espanol, speak Spanish for our Latino constituents. And as you all know, if you do have a question about the criminal justice system, I hope you will log on to my website, marahannigan.com, click on the Criminal Justice Connection link, and either I, a member of my staff, my advisory board, will try to answer those questions. You can also give us a call at 617-788-7750, or stop up and see us at 3 Pemberton Square, right across from City Hall, around the corner from the State House. Well, we really appreciate you joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again next Tuesday. We hope you had a great Valentine's Day out there. And as you all know, uh, President's Day is coming up uh, next week. So all these wonderful holidays and great occasions. So thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, I'm Mara Hennigan, your Suffolk County Superior Court Clerk Magistrate for Criminal Business, signing off. See you next Tuesday.